All right, well today we're going to talk about lead and specifically lead in a clinical practice. But before I um, get started, instead of a cartoon, I, I read a recent story that I thought was interesting. The reason we know lead is a toxic thing in the United States is because of a little farm boy named Claire Patterson, who was from Iowa, who in the 1940s went to the University of Chicago and was studying earth sciences. One of the things they were trying to do at the time was uh, they'd already said the earth was 4.4 billion years old, and they were trying to use a method um, of decay of uranium to lead to, to use it to, to, to prove it was 4.4 billion years old another way. Unfortunately, every time he went out in the environment and, and sampled, he kept saying that the Earth was 8.8 .8 billion years old, and they knew that couldn't be, because not even the universe is that old. But anyway, that's who undercovered the, the fact that our environment was so contaminated with lead from an external source was this guy. And he went on to be responsible for the Clean Air Act of 1970, and the eventual removal of lead from gasoline from sale in the U.S. in 1986. And this was despite attempts of the Ethel Corporation to get him fired for 20 years. He ended up at Caltech, and um, they kept offering to chair uh, departments and, and fund Caltech in amazing ways if they would just fire this guy. But they didn't. And his persistence paid off for the betterment of society, and so I dedicate this lecture to him. But also, I want you to recognize Thomas Migley, who was an engineer, uh, worked for the Ethel Corporation, whose dabbling in chemistry resulted in lead being introduced as a gasoline anti-knock agent. He also invented uh, the CFCs that we've just now taken out, that you know, one squirt takes a whole room of ozone out, and uh, he unleashed those on the atmosphere. His untimely death, however, was back from, uh, from being strangled in a bed of pulleys that he had invented uh, for turning polio victims. And after he invented it, he contracted polio, and then he was strangled by his own uh, device. And so he may deserve the 20th century's top Darwin Award for removing his DNA from, a, from the pool in the most unusual way caused by his own invention. <laughs> okay, lead, who is affected the most? Children, blood-brain barriers are not complete until six months of age, so lead is very absorbed by the CNS of a fetus and young child. The absorption of lead is estimated to be as much as five to ten times greater in infants and young children than adults. So if you look at the U.S. preventative data, they don't even mention adults. They mention children and pregnant women. I have an email into them and a proposal to change that when they meet again this fall. Lead, where does it come from? Everywhere. Soft vinyl lunch boxes were recently found to contain more than 90 times the legal uh, limit. Candy imported from Mexico is always being reported in, you know, from some popsicle a kid eats and they have 15 lead level now. Uh, imported children's jewelry, leaded gasoline, which we banned here in the United States, but it's currently used in farm machinery, boats, racing cars, and overseas. Air is the number one exposure. Uh, indoor dust is greater than soil, like 10 times more. Water, 20% of your daily exposure um, still comes from water, and that's because lead-free fixtures contain brass, which are actually 5 to 7% lead. Imports, uh, especially red and yellow glazed dishware, leaded crystal, and they can even tell you which country leaded crystal um, um, you know, leaches more from. Lead solder is in, in imported canned foods, although it was just recently, like in the last 10 years, they still, you could have lead solder in your canned goods uh, f here. Foods from Mexico, China, spices, even wine. Uh, medicines, uh, I've tested and sent off uh, lots of people who come for chelation and have high lead levels. They're, they get their Ayurvedic herbs and, and, and we test them and they're just full of, uh, because of the way they're processed in these uh, pans, um, full of lead and cadmium and arsenic and mercury. Um, vinyl mini blinds imported before 1996 were tremendously high and of course, you know, those were in everybody's house. And cosmetics have been a recent or an ongoing thing, you know, red and lipsticks, as well as many other, you know, colors. Okay, so lead in wine. Okay, in 432 wines tested in the bottle, the lead in domestic wines ranged from 1 to 521 parts per billion, with an average of 41. 
And the level in imported wines were had an average of 94. And the um, amount, the EPA limit for lead in drinking water is 50 parts per billion. So depending on which brand of imported or exported or, you know, wine you had, um, you could, you were much higher in the overseas wine. Well, why was this? Now, I don't have this slide up here, but the re they looked at crop, they looked at dirt, they looked at surrounding industries, they looked at, you know, the grape, the stem, and all these different things, and it turns out it was the, um, the faucets in the wineries that have brass. So they have a lot of lead exposure as where they sit in the, 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 bar the barrels and, and, and as they're processed. So that's where the lead comes from in wine. Um, red and yellow glazes are full of it. Um, this was a, a plate that um, I think Lynn had from her lecture in the past that's, that was still being sold over, you know, at American Home Furnishing so, so many years ago. Um, interestingly, we're doing this at our clinic at a big open house next week. You can go online and order these little things that look like uh, Q-tips and, and a little solution, and you can um, rub them on these plates and dishes and things that you have and put a few drops of the solution on, and it'll turn a color if it's, you know, I think it's yellow, if, if, that, if it's leaching lead. So this is something we do as a demonstration now in our clinic, or we're getting ready to start doing. Uh, at this open house next week, um, but you can get about two or a hundred of these swabs for about forty bucks. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get these swabs, there you know you get two or three swabs for four bucks. But you can go and get them in mass for if you want to test people or if you want to have them in your office for demonstration. This was a Reebok case not too long ago where a four-year-old uh, uh, swallowed this thing, a little charm that was on a on a shoe, and it was 99% uh, lead. And um, I think his um, blood lead level was something like 40 or 50. I mean, it just, I mean, he was encephalopathic. Uh, 